What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And we are back now with episode three of The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder from season one. This episode actually wasn't too bad. As I watch this episode, I'm looking through it and I'm shocked at the fact that I, I feel as if somebody totally different wrote this entire episode. I watched the last two episodes and obviously it had its woke tendencies, but this particular episode really wasn't that bad at all. And it also had a lot of good messaging in it in terms of family and whatnot. So I'm shocked and I, I hope I can present it to you that will probably shock you guys. And in case you guys are unaware, I review every episode separately because in a show like this, obviously the story changes within every episode. There's really no true continuity for the most part other than the characters themselves. So before we get into the actual episode, guys, all I'm going to ask you, of course, is two things. Don't forget to like the video and consider giving me a long view duration on this video as we fight the YouTube algorithm every single day. And with that being said, let's get into the review for episode three of The Proud Family. So this episode starts off pretty lighthearted. It has Oscar obviously doing his coaching for his basketball team with Sugar Mama in the stands and obviously Trudy is also in the stands up here and the game is pretty close with Proud Snackers losing by two points right now and we have Michael the gay character from the first two episodes who is Proud's star in this actual game which he ends up winning the game for them this way check this out So very easy, one, two, three. Michael is celebrated by the entire crowd. And as the crowd leave, Oscar approaches the other coach and check this out. We're not crying about the game, Oscar. Somebody stole our pizzas. <laughs> so they make a joke about pizza being stolen without realizing that Oscar was actually the one who uh, stole the pizza. Check this out. I don't use a pizza, but pizza is for winners. <laughs> so Oscar obviously is making fun of the other coach because they just beat them, even though it was barely, they beat them by one point. But still, and then uh, Kelly shows up out of nowhere, Wizard Kelly, to come challenge Oscar to a game. Check this out. It's Oscar Wiz, and history is not going to repeat itself. This time, I'm going to win. <laughs> I think so Wizard Kelly basically challenges Oscar to a game, of which Oscar ends up accepting uh, under certain conditions. And then, But Wizard actually shows players that are on his team, and one of which are his sons. And if you look at them, it's actually pretty funny because obviously you don't never see Wizard Kelly's face, but you see his son's faces, and, and you kind of get an idea why you don't see Wizard Kelly's face. Check this out. Hey, Not only is there my son, Little Wizard. Hey. So Little Wizard, his face is, is terrible. And now we kind of get an idea as to why we don't get to see Wizard Kelly's face. Honestly, I'm kind of glad we don't get to see Wizard Kelly's face because if this is your son, I can only imagine how the father looks. And then there's other players on the team that are not his sons, but they're just basically recreations of basketball players. Hey, but there's Little Jordan, Little Shaq, Little Dirk, and Little LeBron. I wonder if Little LeBron is as political as Big LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> so we fast forward and we see Oscar again being nervous whether or not to take the actual game. But then he decides that he cannot lose because he has Michael and there's no way he's ever going to lose. And he says he'll play him on the one condition that if he wins, he gets to live the lifestyle of Wizard Kelly for a week, which includes cars, women, all that stuff and money. Check it out. <laughs> So not only that, Oscar also says that he also, uh, Wizard Kelly has to live like Oscar in poverty for a week as well, which Wizard Kelly ends up agreeing to only if he gets to steal Oscar's best employee for his own businesses if he wins. Check this out. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, people! What do you want my water boy, Wizard? I've been looking for a smart young go-getter to help run the Wizards' many businesses. So Oscar ends up agreeing, of course, because he feels like there's no way to lose because he is going to have Michael on his side. But what ends up happening is the water that he ended up wiping off his face when he was being arrogant to the other coach, Michael ends up walking on top of, slipping and falling and hurting his knee. Check it out. <laughs> So, of course, Oscar freaks out and he gets a quick lesson on karma, which, again, I really appreciate that they put that in there because I think uh, a message on karma, a lot of people need to learn. Then we fast forward and we see Penny on a not so much date date, if you know what I mean, with some boy watching a very old classic movie. And they're pretending to be studying, which their parents obviously catch them. And when their parents catch them, Oscar is, of course, upset. And he says this. Check it out. Not dating, daddy. We're just watching a movie for film class. How was your game? 
Do I look stupid to you, Penny? Sugar Mama ends up trying to butt in and let her do her thing, but of course, Oscar's not going to be having it. And Trudy's ironically not having it either until the little boy compliments Trudy, of which then all of a sudden she just forgets everything. So Oscar ends up kicking the kid out, and when he kicks the kid out, the kid stands up, and Oscar realizes just how tall this kid is and gets the idea that he should play basketball for him to replace Michael, who he just recently lost. Check this out. Stand up, son, so I can punch you. I mean, look you in the eye. Yes, sir, Mr. Proud. Not gonna lie, I thought that was pretty funny. Then you fast forward, and he ends up trying to force the kid to play basketball in order to gain uh, the kid's favor and uses Penny to gain the kid's favor and says, you guys can hang out as much as you want, but you gotta come play basketball for me first. The kid feels compelled to say yes to Oscar, but then Penny says, uh, you don't have to do what my dad says. You're not forced to do it. Be yourself. Don't do what people tell you to do. Don't do what people force you to do, which again, I thought was a good message, and I appreciate that it's in uh, this TV show, which is uh, supposed to be for kids, which is why I wonder who the hell wrote this particular episode, because I feel like it's totally different from the last two episodes. There is some wokeness in this show, don't get me wrong, this particular episode, and I will point it out, it's towards the end, uh, but there's really not that much of it. But don't worry, I'm sure there's going to be plenty, especially when we get to season two, which is the one everybody wants me to get to, but I'm going to go through all the episodes, so everybody gets the full context of the entire show. So they go outside, and the kid starts shooting the basketball free throws, and then Oscar realizes that this kid is absolutely garbage at playing basketball he's literally throwing bricks non-stop check it out so the kid sucks at playing basketball and he's not going to be very good at all oscar wonders how the hell does he suck so bad penny ends up coming outside and saying you don't have to do this and then this happens mama please you make ABC. oscar stop okay oscar that's enough Come on. Call me. So Oscar ends up getting pulled away by Trudy, and then Penny ends up taking the card and obviously not giving it to him because he do she doesn't want him to be bothered by her dad. So Oscar ends up complaining as Kareem starts to leave the house, and then when Kareem leaves the house, Oscar thinks that he's taking shots outside and actually starting to land him, and then when Oscar runs outside to see who's throwing the free throws, it's none other than Penny herself. So Oscar, completely realizing that Penny's landing every single free throw, he just completely forgot that he was actually the one that taught her how to play basketball in the first place. Check it out. Where did you learn how to shoot like that, Penny? You taught me when I was a little girl, don't you remember? So there's a lot of father and daughter moments in this uh, particular episode, which again, I thought was pretty good. And I don't know why they don't do more of this stuff. Um, honestly, I think it would be very good for the kids who watch this kind of TV show. But again, it's only few and far between, I'm sure. And then we see a scene where as Penny starts to get a little bit older, she gets better at playing basketball to the point where she's landing shots left and right. Check it out. Obviously, it's a bit of a girl boss moment uh, because they make her better than literally every single boy in the entire school system. I mean, she thrashes everybody. They even make her the best basketball player in the galaxy by making her play against aliens. But you're going to see exactly what I mean. Uh, but aside from the whole girl boss thing, still, it's a good message between the daughter and the father. And I can appreciate it. And then Oscar ends up uh, begging, literally begging Penny to play on his team. And she doesn't want to have anything to do with it. And after continuously begging over and over, over again, she says it's fine. She'll do it, but not for herself only to make her dad happy. So of course, Oscar is ecstatic about it, and, and now they continue to play games where Penny is completely dominating teams left and right. She ends up actually even playing a team by herself where she questions uh, what happened. I thought it was supposed to be a team effort, but uh, it's not. She just continues to dominate. Check this out. What are you rude doing? That's our pizza money. Penny, you better do something or no pizza for anybody. So as I said, she continues to dominate left and right. She literally beats everybody, but the problem is She's starting to ignore Kareem, uh, who's actually waiting for her at the library because they initially had planned to meet there. And uh, she ends up not being able to make it because of the basketball game. And he ends up walking out, even though she just got there literally 10 seconds, not even that, after he left. Check it out. And they continue showing how she continues to dominate team after team after team, even all by herself. Kareem ends up going over her house, hoping that Penny would be there. But of course, she doesn't make it. And he ends up leaving and telling her mom to just let her know that he was there. And this is where you have a little bit, like I said, of a girl boss moment where Penny decides to go up against five people all by herself. Obviously, it's exaggerated. It's a kid's show. But still, it's just a typical girl boss thing. Check it out. But Dad, I thought we were a team. Penny, there's no we in team. Destroy them. 
So again, she completely destroys them and she ends up standing up Kareem again at the uh, library and Kareem ends up getting fed up and leaves. But then as he leaves, La Cienica decides to want to jump in there and steal his attention, which she does succeed by doing so. She shows him a book uh, called Between the World and Me, written by ta Coates. And uh, they end up leaving the library together, which Maya is perfectly fine with. Then we get this crazy scene where Penny is actually playing basketball against an alien because, again, uh, she's supposed to be the best in the galaxy or something like that. This is the closest game she's ever had. But, of course, she's going to end up winning and she beats them with this crazy Space Jam type move. Check this out. Obvious Space Jam reference, at least that's what I feel anyway. And then uh, she starts signing autographs in the school because now she's very popular again, even though in the last episode she was literally canceling everybody. But then she ends up seeing Kareem with La Cienega and realizes what's going on. La Cienega tries to go to Penny uh, and pretend like nothing's happening, but Penny obviously is not stupid. And then they end up grilling her, and Dijonay says what La Cienega is doing is obviously not right. Check it out. the game tonight, Penny? Did you know about that, Maya? Basketball? <laughs> I don't support any sport that pays women one twentieth of what they pay men. So there's the wokeness that I was talking about towards the end of the episode, right? So they make this uh, reference about the WNBA and they're trying to make it seem as if the WNBA is underpaid. The WNBA, just a quick reference, is not underpaid, okay? If anything, I would argue they are overpaid. The WNBA is subsidized literally by the NBA every single year because they lose money and they get paid based on what they bring in. And unfortunately, the WNBA brings in literally almost nothing. It's really pathetic what they bring in compared to the uh, NBA. Even women don't watch the WNBA just to go to show. So uh, whenever you see comments like this saying, oh, I don't support sports that underpay women, it's from people that have no idea how business works. But let's continue onward. So obviously, Penny and Lassie have a little bit of a difference and La Cienega ends up leaving with Maya. I don't know why they're on opposite ends. I guess because Maya canceled Penny in the last episode. And then Penny ends up going to the gymnasium to play by herself, of which Kareem ends up showing up and uh, they kind of make amends. Check this out. What are you doing here? I thought you had a concert today. I haven't seen you in a minute. So when they make up, uh, Kareem ends up proving to her that he can actually play basketball and he was hiding it the entire time from her dad, Oscar. Check this out. Yeah, but that's easy for you because you can't ball like this. So obviously she's shocked because he was lying the entire time and he purposefully didn't want to play basketball because he wanted to focus on his studies as well as his music and everything that he was doing in school, which is the reason why he ended up lying to uh, Penny's father about him being able to play basketball. Then the final game shows up against Wizard Kelly. <laughs> So Penny's getting absolutely murdered every which way imaginable. They haven't scored a single point, and Wizard Kelly's up by a drastic amount. Check this out. Oscar ends up calling a timeout. He wants to speak to his team. Watch what happens. What are you doing? I am never going to beat the Wizard with you playing like this. Penny ends up getting fed up and getting pissed and said that she no longer wants to even play. She convinces the entire team to walk out and get pizza, which automatically makes uh, Proud lose the game, even though, let's be real, I mean, he was at zero points. Wizard Kelly was at 150 with three minutes left. You're probably going to lose the game anyway. Wizard Kelly ends up coming in and saying that he's come, he's come uh, to claim his prize now uh, of the worker, and, and the worker ends up not showing up, not right away anyway, because Oscar ends up holding him back. And then we end up seeing La Cienega and Maya not paying attention to Kareem playing his music at all. Check this out. Did you know that Beethoven was a brother? He was a quarter black. A quadroon. So obviously, she, uh, they are not interested whatsoever because La Cienega really only wants Kareem uh, for herself because Penny wants him, and it's one of those vindictive things. And then uh, the team ends up showing up to see Kareem play on stage, and then this happens. Check it out. Penny? Kareem ends up being very shocked that Penny actually showed up to watch him play. Uh, he thought that she was going to be at the game. And then she tells she tells him everything that went down about how staying true to herself and how it meant a lot to her that um, she that he said what he said to her. And then as they decide to want to leave together, La Cienega shows up out of nowhere and tries to get Kareem back. Watch this. Hey, Kareem, I'm not trying to pressure you. But you got to be true to yourself. So she repeats that whole phrase, stay true to yourself, which, again, I think is a very good phrase to be teaching kids um, in this actual episode. I wish they would do more of this, but unfortunately, they just don't. 
Uh, and then Kareem ends up leaving La Cienega to go with Penny, of course. And then you see Oscar uh, talking to Wizard Kelly, who, again, is trying to get his employee. And Oscar ends up trying to hide the employee in the back. Wizard Kelly knows that Oscar's hiding uh, the employee in the back. And then this happens. Check it out. At my office by noon tomorrow. Then, then what? Then what, Wizard? Huh? Then what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Welcome to the Wizard Kelly. Oscar ends up being the one to work for Wizard Kelly instead of his employee at the movie theater, which his daughter and Kareem are actually there right now trying to get tickets for a movie. They all end up working for Wizard Kelly at the end, including his own employee and the trans woman from the first episode. So she just ends up popping up, you know, little by little. I don't really know what's going on with her. She kicks Oscar out because they get into a little bit of an argument. And then the episode ends from there. So again, guys, this particular episode I thought was okay. I didn't think it was that bad at all. Honestly, I thought it had some slight funny moments. I thought the messaging was really good in this particular episode. They, aside from the stupid WNBA comment, which again, they had to throw that in there just because we're still dealing with the same kind of people. It's still Disney at the end of the day. It's still the same kind of people who are writing this show. So again, I don't know who wrote this particular episode with the messaging. I thought it was very, very, very well done. But ultimately, I just know what's going to get worse as time goes on, especially as we go towards season and two so with that being said i'm going to give this particular episode for the proud family episode three a solid six out of ten i thought the episode was very good in the sense of uh, messaging i thought it was trying to teach a, a, a good message uh still the animation don't really like it but that's a personal preference the WNBA thing really lost points for me if, if it wasn't for that WNBA comment i feel like this episode probably could have been a seven but i had to deduct just a little bit because of that stupid freaking message that they're trying to pass off to kids uh and not really talk to them about the true nature as to why WNBA is underpaid. And then the other points that were lost for, was for the silly girl boss moment. Said, listen, I get it's a TV show, it's a kid show, but at the end of the day, it's pretty obvious that they were trying to do a, a, a girl boss moment there with Penny. Aside from that, though, I thought the episode was pretty decent. I hope they do more like this, but chances are they're not going to. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode with me. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.